Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to everyone today to St. Philip Mary Parish as we get closer to the end of the liturgical year. Uh, before we start Mass, uh, we have to give our condolences to Jermaine. She lost her husband this week on Halloween, and so we know that he is eternally blessed now. And you're in our thoughts and our prayers, Jermaine. And also, I found out yesterday that Sally Majak lost her husband in Frank. And so um, we have two new ones in heaven um, that are now with the Lord. And so, and also, Deacon Max lost his son on All Souls Day. So, uh, condolences to you as well. Okay, God bless you. Uh, before we start mass, do we have anyone that's visiting us still at this time of the year? Anyone out of town here today? Anyone visiting? No, it's just us. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's go to our special prayer, then let's pray together. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. My parish is composed of people like me. I help make it what it is. It'll be friendly if I am. It'll be holy if I am. Its pews will be filled if I help fill them. It will do great work if I work. It'll be prayerful if I pray. It'll make generous gifts to many causes if I'm a generous giver. It'll bring others into worship if I invite and bring them. It'll be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, of compassion, charity, and mercy if I who make it what it is and fill with these same things. Therefore, with the help of God, I now dedicate myself to the task of being all things I want my parish to be. Amen. Shall we turn to each other and welcome each other to Mass? Welcome to the And on this 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time, we sing hymn number 845, 845, Making Their Way, number 845.
peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dearly beloved, my sisters and brothers, we come here knowing how much God loves of us, loves us and how much he expects of each of us daily as we continue to follow him as disciples. Let's pray today as we come to him let's, that he always uses us the way he needs to so we can truly bring others to him. For those times we fail, those times we sin, let's beg the Lord again for his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of her Virgin all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. A great king am I, says the Lord of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations. And now, O priest, this commandment is for you. If you do not listen, if you do not lay it to heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you, and of your blessing I will make a curse. You have turned aside from the way and have caused many to falter by your instruction. You have made void the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. I therefore have made you contemptible and base before all the people, since you do not keep my ways, but show partiality in your decisions. Have we not all the one Father? Has not the one God created us? Why then do we break faith with one another, violating the covenant of our fathers? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is found in the hymnal at number 89, Psalm 131, My Soul is Still, number 89.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we were gentle among you as a nursing mother cares for her children. With such affection for you, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well. So dearly beloved had you become to us. You recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery. Working night and day in order not to burden any of you, we proclaim to you the gospel of God. And for this reason, we too give thanks to God unceasingly that in receiving the word of God from hearing us, you receive not a human word, but as it truly is, the word of God, which is now at work for in you who believe. The word of God, the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens hard to carry, but they do not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places in honor at banquets, seats of honor in the synagogues, greetings in marking places and salutations. Rabbi, as for you, do not be called rabbi. You have one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master. You have but one master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You have turned aside from the way. You have caused many to falter by your instructions. The first reading from the prophet of Malachi doesn't mince words at all today. 
to the priests. We don't hear from him often at Sunday Mass, just twice every three years. And so the text might seem a little unfamiliar to many of you today. Like many of the prophets, Malachi looked around and wasn't very happy at what he saw was going on. In these verses, he's rebuking the priests for a reason. As religious leaders, he felt they were failing both in their behaviors and also in their teaching, their instructions. And as a member of the clergy, each time I hear a passage like this, one which includes some very negative things about priests, I can't help but think of the many ways that priests have failed us through the years in small ways, and as you know, sometimes horrendous ways, sometimes criminal ways. But I don't want to use today's homily to revisit that painful stuff. But I do hope that today in our world, priests are making more of an effort to be more faithful and more trustworthy in truly serving God's people in the way they're supposed to. You know, we expect much from our leaders, don't we? We do. Whether they are priests or teachers, coaches, politicians, bosses, or heading up charities or worthy, worthwhile organizations. In a very real sense, I think we want them to be very good examples. Am I right? Good examples to us. Examples of what it means to be a good person, to be a good citizen, to be a good neighbor, a good friend, a good employee, a good disciple. And I guess that you could say that what we expect of our leaders, in some sense, is a sort of sense that they teach us something in what they do in their leading. They help us to be better people at whatever we are pursuing. And when they don't, and when they don't measure up, it hurts. We're disappointed. In many ways, it's deflating. And in their failure to really give the great example to give enough, it might even make us justifiably angry. And you know, for some Catholics, all they need sometimes is someone to make them angry to have an excuse to never come back to church again. We've all seen that happen in our life, haven't we? They got angry enough and never came back. Oh, priests, you've turned aside from your way. You've caused many to falter by your instructions. We all know the importance of having very good teachers. How many teachers do we have in this room today? Or maybe retired teachers do we have? Come on, tell us. We want to see. I want to thank you. Thank you for your role in life. Thank you very, very much. And well, most of often we use the word to mean those that stand in front of the classroom, we also know that teaching is not limited to that setting, is it? Parents, of course, know this very well. Know that they have the primary, primary, primarily responsibility to be the ones who are first teachers of their children in all things, especially at baptism, we say, the first teachers of the ways of faith. They teach sons and daughters what is right and wrong. They teach them how to be a good person. They teach them the things that they need to become a healthy, happy adult. They teach them, hopefully, to love Jesus. Important stuff. Agreed? Important stuff. And while parents have countless opportunities to tell their sons and their daughters about all these things, countless opportunities are there always to tell them what they should do. I remember my mom and dad often reminding me what was most important. Don't do that. You better do this. Don't forget to say thank you. Don't, don't, don't do anything you wouldn't do here at this house that you would do it at that party tonight. There were so many lists of things that they would always say don't do that often in many ways, after a while, I wonder if they probably 
had a lot of weight to them. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But what I mean, words don't carry much weight if the children don't see the parents living out, living out those same things that they say. You know what I mean by that? Acting and talking exactly the same as children are being asked to do. And that's not always easy, especially for parents. What's the saying? Talk is cheap? Yeah. Hopefully we appreciate the many teachers in our midst. Good teaching, we know, takes really a lot of skill. It takes a passion. It takes creativity. It takes a lot of compassion and patience and persistence. And because of these many requirements, not all of us are good at it. Maybe hardly any of us are. And so we who are not good at it, that's probably why we're not in the classroom and we don't choose that as profession. A life of service to others and for their betterment, betterment is truly a beautiful gift. But thanksgive, thank goodness that we don't have to all be teachers, right? Or do we? Or do we? Friends, we know that we all are teachers. If I stand up here and say unkind things about my friends, what does that say to the people that are around? What am I teaching them? My children see me grab a week's worth of condiments, of napkins and utensils from the fast food restaurant. What does that say to them? What am I teaching them? If a neighbor hears me tell them how to falsify their financial documents so they can save money on their taxes, what does that say to the neighbor? People see me volunteer, never volunteering or helping out with anything at church or wherever it might be in the community. What does that say to the children when I'm always making an excuse? What am I teaching them? My coworkers hear me gossiping and mocking just about everything and everyone. What is that teaching them? My friends hear me constantly putting people into categories, making generalizations about people, and making fun of people that are different. What is that teaching them? My friends, whether we want to or not, we're all teachers. We truly are. Every single person is a teacher. Because of our lives, we all say something wherever we are. We, we want to, what we, the way we talk, the way we do things, the way we don't do things, the attitudes we embrace, the way we see other people, all of this speaks volumes to so many people and absorbs around us in conscious ways and unconscious ways by many. And if we're not careful, if we're not aware of this reality, we are not truly trying to be the best people we can be. And we're doing harm. Not only to ourselves, but also to the people we encounter. Especially, often, the children. Oh, priests, you've turned aside from your ways. And you've caused many to falter by your instructions. Many of us today, including myself, could take out the priest's name and put our own names in there, couldn't we? There have been times when we haven't taught the right thing. We haven't given the right example. And so we must ask ourselves today, what am I doing or not doing? Saying or not saying? What might be causing others to falter? These are the heavy burdens we heard Jesus talk about today in the gospel. The things we expect from others, but we refuse to do ourselves. That's a double standard, isn't it? Is it truly how we want to be? I remember when I was ordained, my mother said to me, if you're going to ask the people to do something, you better do it also yourself. If you want to be a good example. Don't sit in the rectory and not do it right along with them. 
I think she was right on, don't you think? Sometimes I'm thankful for what I remember my parents taught, aren't you? So let's be that person that we're called to be. The person who doesn't practice what he or she preaches truly is not giving the right example. Rather, let's live the way in which we teach others what we sincerely mean and say. Let our words not be empty or our actions empty. But rather, may they be an expression of the very same things that we're striving really in our lives to live out. We know the Lord expects a lot from us, his disciples. And in many ways, everyone here is a priest because of baptism. Everyone. And we all are called to be a what? about what is right and good, giving the best instruction by how we live and what we say. This Mass today, let's ask the Lord to help us see how we come across to others. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, we turn to you now with our prayer. That the church may be united in professing her faith in Jesus Christ to a troubled world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the pastors of the church may generously minister to the people of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we, who all have one Father, may build a society that treats the unborn, the inconvenient, and the burdensome as brothers and sisters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for, Saint, for the St. Philip Neary parishioners volunteering at Safe Harbor this Thursday evening. May they provide food, shelter, and hope to those experiencing homelessness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will be comforted by loving friends and family and granted the grace of both physical and spiritual healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who have been called from this life may rest in the peace of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Loretta LaTulip, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for any personal intentions that you brought to Mass tonight that you'd like to mention to our Lord in the silence of your heart. Pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Don Schultz, for Frank Majak, for Charles Wendell, for all we have lost this week, all those who have lost loved ones this week, that God will give them strength in their mourning and their grief, 
And may we as God's people lift them up in our prayers and with our love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, thank you for calling us here tonight. Thank you for allowing us to do your work in the world because of our own baptism. As your disciples, may we continue to go forth every day giving the best example we can and bringing more to you. Answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you are now seated, our ushers come forward accepting your goodness. Thank you, people of God, for your generosity to St. Philip Neary Parish. Thank you. And we sing hymn number 782, Only This I Want, number 782. Pray, dearest sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of your, yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as in one voice now we all acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jeff, our Bishop, all the clergy and religious, and all the priestly baptized people of God. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Philip Neri, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may live to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's love. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. For those joining us online, or for those who cannot accept communion at this time, please join me in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. body of Christ. Our communion hymn is found in the hymnal at number 679, Center of My Life, number 679.
part of our communion meditation today. Let's lift up all those grieving in our world, all those suffering, all those in the ravages of war in the Holy Land, in the Ukraine, wherever there is strife. Let's ask the Lord to watch over all his people that are hurting today. And let's bring peace to all hearts. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just a few little reminders. Let's see here. First, uh, contact Cheryl if you would like to um, be part of the Order of Christian Initiation for Adults. If you would like to be part of the Catholic Church, maybe you haven't been baptized yet or confirmed or made your first communion, or maybe you want to retread in your faith, Cheryl's the person to call at the office. A thank you to Kathy Whalen, to Karen Zimelis. Did I say that right? Did I? I did? Okay. And Linda Payment for making the most beautiful lunch we had yesterday for First Friday. Thank you so very much. Uh, please drop off all returnable cans and bottles now through December 17th. Our youth group from St. Philip Neri is going to put on dinner for Safe Harbor, and that's what they're going to use the money for. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please write down your loved ones in the Book of Life there in the back. Uh, those can be, we are being prayed for during this whole month of November here at St. Philip Neri. I uh, want to get your, your tickets for the Come to Christmas dinner and the event. Please pick up the reservation forms that are at the bulletin stands today or call the office and talk to Kim. Information can be also found in the bulletin today. Raffle tickets will be mailed out this week for the festival. Uh, we're going to have a big 50-50 raffle this year. We are sending out 12 tickets. Uh, they are $5 each, so you get two for free. And um, you can drop off those tickets and payment to the church office um, or in the collection. And this is our way to start raising more funds because in January, or before January, we're going to have all the architectural drawings for our new building. You saw the pictures out there. And then it will be going out to bid. And the more money we have in savings at the parish, the less money I'll have to ask from all of us to give, okay? So the more we make at our festivals, the better it is for all of us in, in the long run. Um, this will be my third building campaign as a priest, and um, I've given to every one of them, and I never miss the money ever because they're for the Lord. And you know what I'm talking about, don't you? When you give to the Lord, he always pays you back. He always does, and many, many blessings. Um, please join us at the fall ministry next weekend in our parish hall. Find out how you can get involved to the parish. And uh, remember, tonight, if you don't set your clocks back, uh, you're going to be messed up tomorrow. So you want to put them back for one hour tonight. And I'm happy about it because I'm having a party tomorrow evening, and so I get an extra hour to cook. So I'm very happy about that. So, isn't that nice sometimes? I've been so hungry for turkey. I'm, I wanted to make a turkey dinner, so I'm going to make a turkey dinner tomorrow. So, so I know how to cook. I really do, believe it or not. Can you believe it? Yeah, yeah. I had a mother that cooked all the time, so I just watched her, and I know how to do it now. So, okay, have a great week. Someone recently said to me, Father, I just don't understand why my children don't go to church. And I said to them, well, did you always go to church yourself? Did you always give a good example? Did you talk good about the priest or bad about the priest? What was going on in the house? 
Now, sometimes things that kids see, they continue on. So we have to keep strong, don't we? We really have to keep working harder at all that because if we don't keep trying our best, we're never going to get people filling these seats here in this church because you know there's a lot of people out there that still could come here. Are we inviting them, like our prayer says before Mass? Are we asking people to come back home? Let's keep trying, people. We got Jesus needs to use all of us and our talents and our voices. That's why he gave us the voice, right? To use it. So let's keep using it, okay? Thanks for lighting up the music a little bit. Today. Um, <laughs> surprise! Yes, We've surprise. been planning this all week. Yeah, <laughs> I just wondered if you were on steroids for a minute. There. <laughs> You're not on steroids? It's, it's natural it's steroids. Natural, natural <laughs> steroids, okay. <laughs> because I thought you were like me when I'm on it. It's like, whoa. I'm not going to touch that one. We're lucky to have all of them, aren't we? Very lucky. We truly <laughs> I can't wait to see what we're going to put on for the festival party, so we've got to figure out our songs yet, okay? We do. You're going to be there, right? Please. I will have to see. We'll have to see. I put the well, plug in the see very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want Luke to be at the festival, don't we, everyone? Absolutely. <laughs> Let's bow our heads praying for God's blessing. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May the Lord always walk beside you. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I did forget something. I'm sorry. I told you last weekend that we have all the squash. They're in the family center by the kitchen area, that little kitchen area back there. And all I'm asking is that you give some donations so I can buy lotto tickets, not for myself, but for one of the items for the uh, festival. I want to decorate a Christmas tree with lotto tickets as one of our prizes. So if you take a couple of squashes, just put some, some extra dollars in there, okay, so we can, we can use that for lotto tickets. That's it. I'm sorry. I forgot that one, okay? Let's go forth now, loving and serving our Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. And we sing hymn number 622, Canticle of the Turning, number 622. Oh, we have one more? I think we may have an announcement. Oh, we have one more announcement, Father. One, what else? Oh, Sandy. Oh, Sandy, I forgot. All, okay. You were on the list. I'm sorry. It's okay. It'll only take a minute, guys. <laughs> My name is Sandy Council, and I'm thrilled to be here tonight to tell you about the first ever Assembly for Human Dignity that's going to be held here in the Diocese of Gaylord. Um, the Assembly will bring together Catholics interested in the common good of our local communities. There will be first-hand stories will be shared about numerous topics including the needs of the Spanish-speaking community, the needs of those who are or have been incarcerated, and the need for affordable housing. The assembly will share how we as Catholics are called to care for each other and how we can collaborate to do so. Over the past few months, Father Wayne has celebrated Mass with us several times while Father Ken was recovering. You probably have heard those words in his homily before, that we are called to care for each other. Father Wayne was instrumental in setting up the Assembly for Human Dignity. Our Bishop, Jeffrey Walsh, will be there to share remarks and blessings. Civic leaders will also be present including state representatives, state senators, the Traverse City Mayor, the Traverse City Police Chief, the Grand Traverse Police Chief, and leaders from local health and mental health institutions. We hope you will join the Assembly for Human Dignity in showing how deeply Catholics care about each other and our neighbors. The Assembly will take place at St. Francis Social Hall in Traverse City, from 10.30 to noon next Saturday, November 11th. There's going to be a fellowship lunch afterwards, 
And if you would like to attend, please stop at the back of church and I have a sign up sheet so that we have an idea how many lunches to prepare. Um, let us all join together as fellow Catholics to put our faith into action and care for communities. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you next Saturday, November 11th. God bless. Thanks, Sandy. I'm sorry. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much. Um, and the bishop's going to be there, too. I'm going to be there, and I know that many of you may want to take that hour and a half to, to learn more about how we as Catholics can continue to, to help people in our, our world and our community. Okay? Now let's sing. And we won't keep you for all four verses. Let's do verses 1 and 3. 6, 2, 2. Verses 1 and 3. Spirit. 